I want to get my wedding under control. Several months ago, way back in, oh dear, June 2022, I created a video. A video outlining that, one, I'm getting married, and two, my honey and I really need to plan the wedding. Despite being engaged for several months, we hadn't really done much planning, since our wedding was still over a year away, intentionally delayed in order to give Honey's overseas family the opportunity to attend. Using my past experiences with weddings, I outlined a plan, putting together all the different things that I thought made up a wedding, and all the different things that would need to be organized if we were to successfully get married with all the nice bells and whistles that the two of us were hoping to have. Since then, some very important stuff has been booked and locked in, but... Well, maybe I was thinking too big picture, since there is a bunch of little details that still need to be done. And some big things, like inviting people. Yeah. Well, now that the wedding is less than 10 months away, it's really time to start cracking. And what better way than dedicating the entirety of February to purely wedding planning. That means both this video and the next one will be all about the wedding planning process. And I'm hoping that, by the end of it, pretty much all of the wedding stuff should be locked in. So let's get to it. So where are we currently up to for wedding planning? Well, it's time to pull out that handy dandy plan that I created for the first wedding planning video. Time to cross off some items. Well, we've picked our bridesmaid and groomsman, maid of honor and best man, so that's a check. We finally picked the date and locked in our ceremony and reception venues. We've got an officiant, or celebrant as they're called. We've booked a photographer, and we're booking a videographer as well, though that's half-crossed because there's some more stuff I need to organize with them. The reception venue comes with food, so thankfully I don't have to worry about that. I'm in the process of booking music, though there's some additional stuff I need to do there as well. Though we haven't finalized the order of the reception, we have picked our MC. We've also got someone who's really stepped up to the plate and is helping us plan our tea ceremony. It's a cultural thing though, not unique to China apparently. Oh, and we have somewhat finalized the guest list. Alright, that's not nearly as much as I thought, and a bunch of stuff that's only half done too. Oh dear. Let's not be too disappointed though, the venues are a pretty major thing that I'm very glad we've booked, but I think resting on the fact that those two things are booked has created a bit of a mental crutch that has stunted the urgency of the remainder of what needs to be done. So, what are the most pressing things left to do, at least in my opinion? Honey has a different and stronger opinion that there are many important things left to do. As I alluded to before, the venues, the bookings and everything will not be worth much if we don't have our wedding guests. Here's the thing though, how do you invite wedding guests in this day and age? Seriously, like 10 or so years ago it was pretty standard that you'd send a letter of invitation, but nowadays? I've been invited to weddings via email, letters, even Facebook events and messenger. Honey and I agreed that Facebook was a little too impersonal, so we decided on two paths. For the older generations, grandparents, parents and so on, we'll give them letters. For the younger generation, we'll go emails, specifically using one of those wedding websites that you can send out invitations, save the dates and all of that good stuff. I'm currently using one that seems like it will do the trick, which if it succeeds I'll give it a shout out next video, but I don't want to pre-promote it if it doesn't fit my needs. The features that I need it to do is to be able to send multiple types of invitations, since not everyone going to the ceremony will go to the reception, it's a smaller venue, so we need to be able to send ceremony plus reception versus just ceremony variants of invitations. I need it to record dietary requirements, and I need to be able to ask questions and record responses, custom questions. Now the hard part is getting all the different emails and addresses to send both physical and digital invitations, but that's just a case of contacting people any way that Honey and I can and just doing it. Next important thing, I need to figure out some sort of food for the ceremony, post-ceremony nibbles so people can fill their stomachs and Honey and I can get stuck in the endless photo-taking purgatory until reception time. However, to determine what kind of catering we can have, I have to figure out how and where the food will be served. I am halfway there in that regard, the ceremony venue has a room where food can be served, but I need to check several things. Do they have tables? Do they have cutlery? Do they have plates? Or do I just get the caterer to do all of that stuff themselves? So, step one, check with the venue about what catering is allowed and what things they have available to use for catering, and then I can use that information to determine the caterer. Aside from food, there's more ceremony stuff that I need to figure out. First and foremost is the order of ceremony. 
Honey and I haven't really thought about it too hard. If I were to spitball right here during script writing about what I think a decent order would be, it would probably be start with a bridal party and bride coming down the aisle, celebrant welcomes the guest and introduces the order of ceremony, there's a Bible reading, a song, a short message or marriage, second Bible reading, the actual wedding vows, another song and piece of music as we do the document signing, we exit down the aisle followed by the bridal party and so on, as we start to take photos on site, everyone else moves to the food location, and after more photos and hopefully a quick bite to eat, Honey and I will leave for off-site photos as everyone else enjoys the nibbles. I'll iron out that with Honey and confirm the order. Once we've confirmed the order, we've got to lock in who is doing the Bible readings. Which songs do we do? How are the songs performed? I actually want to lead the first one myself. Coordinating the order with the celebrant, and do we do customized wedding vows, in which case we need to come up with them. Thankfully, I've confirmed already with the venue that confetti is fine as long as it's outside the venue itself. Now, if we've confirmed the order, I need to coordinate even more stuff. First, I need to organize with the venue a day that I can come in prior to the wedding, along with a photographer and videographer, so they can figure out the layout and some good photo positions. I also need to check out the sound system and availability to see what equipment I'll need to bring for music. Another important thing I need to do is to time how long it takes to walk down the aisle. Why? Well, I'm going to arrange and record a song for Honey to walk down the aisle to. I've been dead set on it since we've got engaged, so I'm super keen to do an arrangement of Dearly Beloved from Kingdom Hearts. However, I need to make it long enough for the bridal party and the bride to walk down the aisle. Ergo, I need to time it. I've been bouncing around the order of it, the arrangement. I'm going to be taking inspiration from all arrangements from the Kingdom Hearts games, but it's the timing that's been the difficult thing. So timing the walk is a must. Final thing I'll need to check with the venue and will require Honey's input is decorations. Figuring out where decorations can be, the limits on decorations, which colors and styles best work with the interior, all of that good stuff. Oh, and one more thing, this is why I'm writing the script, it helps me think things through. We'll need to decide if we're printing out wedding booklet thingos. At some weddings, you'll get a little booklet that outlines the order, the lyrics of the music, potentially the Bible verses or poems that are being read out. And if we decide we are doing it, we need to figure out the layout and how we're going to print them. The final, final thing that needs to be done, at least for me, for the ceremony portion of the wedding to be considered completed is, you know, getting the rings. I still haven't gotten Honey her engagement ring, let alone the wedding rings for the two of us. If you haven't seen the proposal video, it was in the middle of COVID lockdowns, so I got a placeholder ring, but it still hasn't gotten place filled. Thankfully, Honey has taken point on this one for a while, and we've got the designs and a good candidate for a jeweler to create it. We just need to lock them in, pay, and get the darn things made. Oh dear, I'm four pages into the script and I've only covered the ceremony and invitations. I'll try to speed it up. Going section by section, continuing with the reception. We need to figure out the order of the reception, in detail. After a midday-ish ceremony and a large gap for photographs, we'll likely be starting in the late afternoon. Another rough plan would be nibble served as music plays, then people are seated as the bridal party arrive at the venue, the MC introduces us as we enter to a song of our choice, maybe do a little dance or something of the sort, I'll make a little show of it. MC welcomes everyone, thanks people for coming, and so on and so forth. Food starts being served. First couple of speeches, probably our friends and bridal party. More food. Parent speeches, I know mine will do at least one, though I'm not sure about Honey's. Food again? I need to double check the number of courses. Honey and my speeches, if Honey is too nervous, I'll just do one. Dessert, dancing and drinks until late. And then Honey and I will leave early, as is custom usually with weddings. Much like the order of the ceremony, this necessitates figuring out more details as well, though unlike the ceremony, the only real thing is figuring out who wants to do speeches as well as writing our own. I've got two potential speeches in mind and I need to commit to one and write it out. Especially for my sake, I need to time it. I'll get some leeway as the groom, but I can't let it go on for too long. I already do so much rambling in my video scripts. One thing that is half done is the music. We've got a band booked in, though we need to figure out some of the details. They've asked if we've got any song requests, and we need to determine which songs we're going to make them play for our own amusement. Both Honey and I are super keen on getting them to play NSP's Welcome to My Parents' House, a favourite of both of us. Though we can't have them playing all night, they're just human. So though they'll be performing for the first bit of dancing at the end of the night, we'll inevitably switch over to a playlist of some sort, so I'll figure that out. Honey has left me in charge of the music, though she gets to veto any song of her choosing. We've thought a little on our first dance, but frankly that's probably one of the last things on our to-do list. 
I'm keen for a choreographed dance number, but if we're just going to hold each other and slowly move in time to music, that'll be fine with me. The venue does have plenty of space for a dance area, I just don't really remember it right now, so when I do my next round of communication with them, I'll double check it so I can cross it off the list. One thing that I need to consider, which is new, is that, obviously, musicians need to eat. It is part of their terms that we need to provide a meal, and now that I think about it, the photographer and videographer will also need to be able to eat something. So I guess that's, I think, six or seven meals for who I guess I'll call the wedding crew. So that's something I'll organize with the venue as well. Decorations, much like the ceremony, is something that needs to be organized, and if we get a third party involved, it will likely be the same for both the reception and ceremony venues. All the same questions will be asked, and as before, we'll need to double check with the venue that everything is allowed. Once we've sent out the RSVPs and we start getting responses, we'll be able to come up with a seating plan. Again, with this, there are multiple steps. Figuring out the table sizes with the venue, allocating guests to each table, creating a signboard that lists which guests go to which table, having place cards for each guest's seating position at each table. On top of all of that, it's customary to have a little gift for each guest, at least at the majority of weddings I've been to. I mentioned it before, but they're usually just little tokens like chocolate or a bookmark. Still, it is another thing to organize and purchase. One thing I completely forgot about in the first video, I knew there would be something, is the classic wedding item, the wedding cake. We've thought about it a little though, and here's a hot tip. Instead of purchasing a wedding cake, it's always better just to purchase a birthday cake and wedding it yourself. We haven't started browsing ourselves, but our married friends told us this is a hot tip. As soon as you mention the word wedding, cakes, even if they look and taste the same, suddenly get a premium put on, and we want none of that. If I can get all those things done, I can internally check off reception, though there's another portion that's linked to guests. The foreign guest plan is linked to both the ceremony and the reception, and it's still not one we're entirely sure of. One idea that both Honey and I have in mind is pre-translating. That is to say, for every speech, Bible verse, and song, we get someone to translate it into Chinese so that they're able to read it. That does mean we'll have to get the speeches from whoever is making them well in advance. We'll also have to find a translator. Honey could translate her own speech and maybe the song and Bible verses, but I don't want to put the pressure on her. I also don't want her to be spoiled for the content of the speeches. I've got many other Chinese-speaking friends who could potentially do it though, so I'll likely just reach out to them, even if the majority of them speak Cantonese instead of Mandarin. Thankfully, it's all written the same, I think. I already covered invitations earlier, so the last guest item is gifts. And that's not gifts for the guest, that's about handling gifts from the guests. This is kind of another item I'm not too fussed about getting done immediately in comparison to everything else, so I haven't thought of the plan for it. That being said, the same invitation site that I'm currently considering also appears to support a gift registry and all of that jazz. Now, the bridal party. As I said, the members are gathered, save for a determining of a flower girl and ring bearer. We've got a few friends coming to the wedding with young kids, though we haven't asked them yet, and we're not 100% sure they'll be old enough to handle it or they'll just be too shy. More importantly though, at least to me, are all the outfits that we need to organize. We've gotten some good recommendations for wedding dress shops, thanks mum, though I don't want to be involved in that, I want to be surprised on the wedding day, so that's in honey's hands. Bridesmaids and groomsmen outfits, and I suppose my wedding suit, that all still needs to be figured out. Funnily enough, just the other day while driving somewhere, my honey got a call from a suit place. She had entered a competition without informing me, and was offered what at least appeared to be quite a substantial discount. We've booked in a free fitting session this month, though we'll see how that goes. The rest of the men in the bridal party, we want them matching. Though I'm not exactly sure what they should wear. Honey wants a sage theme, a type of green, but I'm not sure about that for a suit colour. Referring to some other friends' weddings, they did a neat thing where, while the men wore black suits, the groom had a black tie and hidden buttons, while the rest of the groomsmen had white ties and black buttons. It's a subtle detail to distinguish them from one another, but not a bad idea. As for the ring bearer, honestly, I'll probably just give that role to my best man. That's a pretty standard answer. I don't think Nugget would be too keen for that role. Finally, the last section, the special cultural implementations, and by that I mean the tea ceremony. As I mentioned, we've got a friend helping us organize that, and we're both very, very grateful. Though we still need to buy the tea and determine our location, though doing it at a parent's house is fairly common. 
Once again, it's just a case of determining what to buy, buying it and locking it all in. Alright, that's a lot of stuff that needs doing. By altering the plan to include the subdivided items, the plan now looks like this. That is a lot more busy. That being said, I think it's much better to break things into these smaller, more manageable tasks. Something like food may be fine as an idea, but figuring out restrictions, researching, locking in a selection, and then paying for it are all more easily actionable steps. So what are my goals for next video? What am I trying to get done by the end of this month, or at least before the next video, since scripts are completed unless I'm really short on time, like right now, hopefully at least a week before it goes live. Number one on the list, invitations. Since starting the script, I've already gathered many of the emails I need to send invitations to, though there are still more to get. I then need to plonk all of that onto the wedding invitation websites and get that configured. Really, that should be done by the time this video goes out. Next is to schedule a time with the ceremony venue, photographer, videographer, and anyone else who needs to come. It doesn't need to be done before the next video, but the appointment needs to be made. Along with that, asking all those questions of the ceremony venue so that we're able to plan around them. Locking in the music and coming up with our song requests is another important thing I'll have to book in. Though Honey's mentioned that she's got some secret song requests, so I'll leave those up to her. I'll see if I can find or arrange Welcome to My Parents' House. I want to get a start on food, so along with asking the ceremony venue about tables and such, I'll also create a short list of three to five different catering services and present them to Honey so we can decide what we both want. Honestly, since writing the script, a bunch of progress has already been made, which is really good. I've confirmed with the reception venue, the meals for the wedding crew, and more progress has been made with the videographers, as well as the aforementioned gathering of emails. Things haven't been as fast as I hoped, but I just need to focus on one thing at a time. Thanks for joining me, subscribe and ring the bell to hear about the next wedding video, and let me know if there's any other hot wedding tips like the wedding cake one that you know of. Hopefully this further breakdown will help any of you in the planning of your own weddings. After all, it's not I attempt new things, it's we attempt new things. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a fruitful day.